So today is a day when you have to promise me that you will meditate every night, every evening, maybe in the morning also. Whenever it is possible, if you can go into meditative mood, you are in contact with this divine power. Then whatever is good for you, whatever good for your society, for your country, all is done by this divine power. You don't have to overpower the divine power. You don't have to order, you don't have to ask. Just if you meditate, you are one with this all-pervading power, which is another great blessings to us. Unless and until your sastrara is open, all the blessings of the Divine Power cannot come to you, cannot. Maybe you might get some money, you might get some jobs, you might get this and that, but your own development is only possible when you meditate and your sastrara is completely open and open to truth. <clears throat> now the truth is that this Divine Power is compassion, is love. This is the truth. They say God is love, God is truth. So the equation has to be made that truth is love and love is truth. But it's not a truth that as you have for your own children, you have for your family, attached, attached, Love is not truth. If you are attached to somebody, then you never see the bad points of that person. If you are angry with somebody, then you can never see the good points of that person. But it's a complete detached love and that love is extremely powerful. Because whenever you project that love to anyone, you will be surprised, the problems of that person will be solved, his personality will improve, everything will work out in a very big way and his life will be changed. But if you are attached to anything whatsoever, that attachment itself causes problems and doesn't allow Sahaj to grow. This attachment <coughs> could be any kind. For example, you can be attached to your country, to, attached to your society, attached to your family, it can be of any kind. But when Sastrara is open, you learn one thing is detachment. It just happens that you get detached. Though, I mean, you are not running away. As it is in Sahaja Yoga, we don't believe in people who run away from society and go to Himalayas or that I call up as escapism. That is not the point. What happens is that you are there, you see everyone, you watch everyone, you know everyone, you are close to everyone, but you are a detached person. It's a state of mind that you achieve when Sastra is open. Then that state you… <coughs> you are dealing with people, uh, you are dealing with problems, you are dealing with situations but you are not involved in it. There's no involvement and that involvement which you had before can never give a complete insight what is happening, what is the truth is about any situation. So this detachment helps. The greatest thing of the detachment is that you are not affected. No use saying that, oh, you are not affected, mother, so <clears throat> how can you feel for another person, how can you have <clears throat> compassion for another person? Because if you feel for another person, then only you can solve the problem. But this feeling that you have is again a kind of an attachment. It is not a real uh, feeling because it doesn't help. The person is crying, you are also crying. The person is trouble, you are also in trouble. And this does not help that person, nor will it help you. So uh, to have detached in no way means you do not feel 
they are another person. You do feel, you feel the agony of that person, the trouble of that person, of the whole society sometimes and of the whole country. But that your feeling is so detached that the all-pervading power takes over. First we must have full faith in the capability of this all-pervading power. As soon as you are detached, you say, you do it, finished. Once you say that, you are going to do it, it's you who is going to do it. Whole thing changes completely because you transfer all your responsibilities, all your problems to this, this divine power which is so powerful, which is so <coughs> capable, uh, which can work out anything. So when, whenever you think that this problem you are going to solve, you are the one who is going to do it, then all right, the divine power says, all right, try your luck. But if you can really put this problem to the divine power, it will work out. We have all kinds of problems in Sahaja Yoga, especially when we find that uh, people are not so much attracted to Sahaja Yoga, they are few in number, then you feel very bad about it. But have you tried to meditate on this point and have you tried to put this problem to the divine power? Why should we worry when we have divine power available through our sastara? Why should we worry? Why should we think about it? Just leave it to the divine power. If that is possible, if that you can achieve, you see, which is very difficult for human beings because they live with their ego, they live with their, their conditionings. But if that attachment to all these things goes away, then what you do is just leave things to this power. Krishna has said in his Gita, Sarva dharmanam parityajya mahame kam Forget about all your dharmas. Dharmas means he means meaning that we have a dharma of a wife, of a husband, of a uh, member of the society. All of them have their own dharma. But he says, leave them and leave it them to me and I'll manage. This is it we have to learn, is to say that it's this divine power which will solve our problems. As human beings, it's a very difficult state and this state only can be achieved through meditation. But I'm not saying that you go on meditating for hours together, not necessary, but with full faith in yourself and in the divine power. If you work it out, I'm sure it's not difficult to rise to that state of consciousness. That is what we have to achieve. It's possible for men as well as for women. They don't have to think, how can we mother do it after all? See, all such people are no good for surgery. Those who have <coughs> diffidence about themselves cannot do anything. But those who are surrendered and those who think they can do it can manage all <coughs> uh, this transfer of their uh, power to the divine power. Just put it on the divine power. Now supposing I have a car which can drive me down. So if I have a car, then I don't put bullocks on it, that, that I don't push my car, I just sit inside and use it. In the same way, if you have this great power around you, if your sastrara is absolutely, completely submerged in it, then you will be amazed how things work out for yourself. <coughs> I will give you an example of Sajogi, he is no more now. He was a fisherman, ordinary fisherman, but also he was educated, so he was working in a bank. This one was going one day to do some Sajoga work and he had to go by boat. So when he came out, he saw the whole place was clouded and it was about to burst out into a big havoc. So he got very much uh, perturbed about it, that, what is this? Immediately his sastrara was so open and good, immediately he said, now I leave it to this divine power. 
to stop all these things happening. I don't want it to rain and to have any problem till I come back home and go off to sleep. And it was surprising, people told me that, Mother, the clouds and everything were there all throughout, but it did not rain, did not uh, do anything, and there was no chaos of any kind. He went to another island where he had to go, he did Sahaja Yoga and came back. And then when he went to sleep, then only everything started pouring down. So nature, everything, every leaf, every flower, everything is worked out through the Divine power. So we should not have our ego that we can do something ourselves, we can manage ourselves. Once you have that kind of a thing, you are not yet that much developed, you are not that much grown up in Sahaja Yoga. But to grow up in Sahaja Yoga should not be difficult for you because you are guidelines. Those people who got their Realization, very few of them, like Sufis and we had some saints in India, all of them, how much they must have struggled. Nobody to guide them, nobody to help them, nobody to tell them about what they can achieve. And this, despite that, they, they were very satisfied people, very happy people and they worked it out so well. They saw the whole world with another angle, as you can also see, but they were not upset and they had such self-confidence, they had such uh, knowledge of their own that they achieved through their meditative process. And the way they have written books, some of them are so great, it's very surprisingly how they have achieved these great verses such full of knowledge. One cannot understand that they had no guidance, nobody was to tell them. But one thing with them was that they always tried to look after their Sahasrara. Now one thing is there obstructing Sahasrara is the movement of your Agya into thoughts. That's the only thing that's the only thing that stops your entry into Sahaja Yoga. Thoughts are coming <clears throat> all the time because a human being is born who reacts to everything. React to this and react to that and the thoughts come in and thoughts go. There's a big crowd of thoughts. Because of that your attention cannot cross over Agya and can reside in the Sastra. So first of all, one should see ki what sort of thoughts are coming. You have to condemn yourself sometimes. You have to say, what nonsense, what have I been doing? What's the matter with me? How could I do all that? Once you start doing that, these thoughts will start disappearing. These thoughts are coming from two angles, one from the ego and another from your conditionings. And these are so much built up within you, that they don't allow your Agya to be crossed. That's why we have two Bija mantras of Amksham. First one is, when it is conditioning, you are endowed with this kind of a fear, I shouldn't do like this, I shouldn't do like that, is not allowed, that is not allowed. That's the conditioning part of it. Conditioning can be of many types, but the ego part of it is that I must overpower everybody, I must get this, I must um, be able to rule everyone. These two things are there in the mind which are all the time crossing them. So it's important that we should go into thoughtless awareness. And that thoughtless awareness is the real uh, way that your sastrana can be nourished by the Kundalini. Because Kundalini cannot go through, cannot pass through. And for that, as I said, there are two Vijaya mantras, is one is Ham, another is Sham. So if you are conditioned, you are frightened, you are afraid and you had ideas about yourself. These days, the way people are describing, they'll say, I'm an extrovert, somebody will say, I'm an introvert, somebody will say, uh, I'm 
hippie, I am that, I am that, all kinds of things they can have attributed to themselves. But these ideas are all coming from outside, they are not from inside. To get to the inner side of yourself, to the subtler side of your being, you must allow the Kundalini to go through the Agya. To cross the Agya is a very important thing in modern times and for that you have to meditate. If you can meditate with complete faith in yourself, this Agya can be opened up with surrendering to the Divine. You have to surrender yourself to the Divine and when this Agya opens, you'll be amazed your Sastra is just waiting to transfer, to give you all the help that you need through the all-pervading power. Your <coughs> connection of Sastrara with the all-pervading power is established and by that you'll be amazed how all these seven chakras work for you, how they help you, how they try to give you whatever is the real knowledge about everything. This real knowledge that you get is very joy-giving. You can see this real knowledge in everything. You don't have to uh, start reading any book about it. In every situation and in every person, in every flower, in every natural uh, happening, you see clearly the hand of the Divine. Once you see the hand of the Divine, your ego starts disappearing. Once you say that it's you, you do everything. Kabira has said something great about this. He said that when the goat is alive, it goes on saying, I am, I am, I am, I am. But when it is slaughtered and its intestines are made into strings, which are used for cleaning the cotton, then it said, Tuhi, Tuhi, you are, you are, you are. See, in this symbolic way, they have suggested that you have to become the dissolved into this divine power. It's the divine power that does everything. What am I? I was just a drop and I fell into this ocean of awareness of the divine power and that is taking over and working it out. That will help you a lot uh, to be a great surgeon. You develop curing powers, but still you are not proud of it. Uh, you developed, of course, awakening powers, you are not proud of it. You develop so many creative powers and you are not proud of it. You become really very, very creative, extremely creative. But the greatest thing happened to you that you become a global personality. So you start seeing the problem of every country, of every other nation where they have problems. But these problems when you see, you don't see like other people because others may like to use it for their own purpose, maybe for media, maybe for something. What you want to see is that these problems are solved. See that your powers are so great, with their, this kind of a mind, I would say, which is dominated completely by the divine power, that it, whatever disturbs you, immediately is taken over and it starts working out. Many, many problems have been solved by surgery and also they can be solved on a very universal level. If you are a global person, if you are a global person, then what happens is that you become a sort of a vehicle uh, or you can become like a channel for this divine power to act because you are purely a global personality. Not attached to this, attached to that, but a pure Sahaja personality which can be used by this divine power very easily. 